Hi friends, welcome back to the Project Return Online Classroom. I'm Miss Celia and today we're going to be continuing our science and biology lessons by learning about the basic structure of human life, which is called a cell. Like I said, cell is the foundation for everything that is living. Cells are the building blocks of life and they are so small that we can't see them just with our eyes. So we need a really strong microscope so we can look at and analyze these little, these little building blocks for life. They're super, super important, even though they're super, super tiny. Uh, cells contain genetic material, but they all have different functions and there's lots of different types of cells. For example, Right now, you're looking at an animal cell. I want you to take a look at it and notice the difference between this cell, which is a plant cell, versus this one, which is a bacterial cell. As you can see, they look a little different because they all have a lot of different functions. They do different things, have different structures held within them. Cells make up something called an organism. And an organism is an individual living thing, so a single living thing. For example, one piece of bacteria is an organism, one cell, one piece of bacteria. But I am also an organism. I am made of trillions of cells that make up the different functions and structures in my body. So I am a single organism. My cat is a single organism and my plants outside, each one of those is a single organism as well. So an organism is an individual plant, animal, or single celled life form. Single celled organisms mainly pertain to bacteria, but there are, all so, there are some animals that are single-celled organisms. Uh, they're so small, they're only made of one cell, but this is possible because that single cell can do a whole different load of functions. For example, it may be able to convert food into energy, it may be able to transport that energy around the different structures to the cell to make sure everything functions, and it can also expel waste from the cell. <coughs> Excuse me. So that one cell can perform multiple functions and therefore it can survive as a single celled organism. But then you have larger complex organisms like you and me. Humans are made up of trillions of cells all working together. All of them have a little bit different of functions, but they all work together and are necessary to survive. Um, they perform different functions based on where they are in your body. For example, cells that are up in your brain and in your nervous system are called neurons. Neurons are cells that transport information around the body and to and from the brain. And these have a very different function than the cells that are in our muscles that make up our heart, for example. These muscles are structural muscular cells. They are responsible for making sure our heart beats and pumps blood around our body. So you can kind of see how these two different places in our body have two completely different functions and our cells need to be a little bit different. Even though some cells have different functions, they, a lot of them have similar structures. Uh, there are key things within cells that make up a cell and make it what it is and allow it to function properly. Different cells have different structures, but a lot of them carry similar structures because they all have to have the same kind of core components to make them a cell. For example, they all carry genetic material, which you've probably heard referred to as DNA. And DNA gives the cell the information that it needs to be able to survive and perform its function. They also carry something called cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is like a gel-like substance that makes up the body of the cell and gives it its shape and structure. And it also transports nutrients and materials around the cell. So different structures can interact with each other by transporting materials through the cytoplasm. Every cell, regardless of what it is, has a membrane and a membrane is like the skin of the cell. So it protects the inside of the cell, makes sure the good things stay in and the bad things stay out. No materials or other substances can get into the cell without passing through the membrane. So it's kind of a, a protective layer for the cell. Some cells have something called an organelle and an organelle, keyword organ, is a part of the cell that performs a very specific function. Um, these organelles are different based on what type of cell it is, but in animal cells, we have the mitochondria, which breaks down sugars and converts it into energy. In plant cells, we have chloroplasts, and chloroplasts are only in plant cells, not in any animal cells. 
and they absorb sunlight and convert the sunlight into energy. So you can see between animals and plants, animals get their energy from food, plants get their energy from sunlight. So they need different structures in their cells to be able to convert that into energy. And then in any cell that has genetic material and DNA, there is a central little pocket where that is held and it's called the nucleus and the nucleus is like the brain of the cell. That's where all the DNA is held and that's where all the information is dispersed to the cell to tell us to tell our cells what they need to do and how they can survive. So that is our little review on the cells. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember, cells are the building blocks of life. So in my last video, when I talked about body systems, every organ, body system, or anything within our body is made up of cells. So this is just a closer look at what we talked about last week. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is Casper. He just wants to see what's going on. Okay, look down. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Get down.